My name is Jim Hackenberg, PGA golf professional and developer of the Orange Whip products. I'm here with Stan Utley, PGA Tour winner. He's consistently ranked in the top 50 of the Golf Digest best instructors. We are here today at Greyhawk Golf Club where Stan is the instructor and we're going to talk Orange Whip. Jim, I, I'm excited to be on your team. I've used the Orange Whip a long time. I mean, what, what caused you to come up with an idea to create such a thing and, and then when you got it created, can you explain to me the benefits you thought you were trying to give to the consumer? Absolutely. As a golf instructor, I struggled with the tension and basically that chopping or hitting motion most of my students had. They would take that club and just try to bury it down into the golf ball. I had a very unique opportunity to caddy on the PGA Tour. I was watching the best players in the world every day. They all had beautiful rhythm, balance, and their hands, arms, and body all flowed together. Which makes us all think of Ernie Els, the Big Easy. Absolutely. I watched Ernie as much as I could because of that motion. And, and it's fascinating. When I think of Ernie, it's like, okay, he looks like he's swinging smooth, but if you ever stand next to him, the ball leaves very fast. So you know at that impact, the club head's really going, and, and I think you chase that idea. Absolutely. What I started to see was that golf club looked like it was a weighted ball on the end of a chain. And if you could swing a weighted ball on the end of a chain, everything would flow naturally. There'd be no tension. So I developed basically a weighted ball, and instead of the chain, I went with a flexible shaft for safety, and I've counterbalanced it. And the counterbalance is a crucial element to allow that club to release naturally, but keep you in balance while doing it. That's fantastic. Well, you, you hit on a key word for me, and, and the word is really release, because I think we, we use these golf terminologies uh, that people, they, they, they take on different meanings for different peoples, and, and it's, it's hard for me to know what do you think about when I, when I say release. And as we discussed earlier, Jack Nicholas thought you should release earlier, but what release was he talking about? And I know you're worried about the guy coming over the top. You know, well, show me what you think over the top means, and then I'll talk about what I think in release and over the top means. You bet. The over-the-top motion I saw in most of my students was they'd get the club lifted up here and they'd just try to quickly get to that golf ball and they'd force the club on top of it. So they, they would move their shoulders and, and kind of give the club almost a toss this way. Exactly right. Well, I, ha I have lots of mentors in my life and, you know, Jim Hardy's helped me with my golf swing a lot. Another friend of mine, Rob Akins, and I, we were having a discussion about a year ago about the, the words release and lag. And I think the orange whip is the best way to get this feeling without worried about hitting a golf ball. And when you're making a swing, for sure at, at a dress, the cl your arm and the club is kind of straight down. And then as you go back and you're at the top, you have this bend with your wrist. So the angle between the shaft and your forearm increases. By the time you get back to the ball, you want it to lengthen back out and get straight again. Maybe have a little angle this way. What people don't understand is release is simply when you let your wrist unhinge down the plane line, so your wrist unhinge this way, lag is as you turn into the ball, you, this elbow stays bent, this wrist is pressed forward. This is the lag angle. The lag angle is not this angle. You do not want to keep this all the way to the ball. If you did, you couldn't get the club head back to the ball. So it's okay to let the club swing and start releasing with your wrist. People say, well, surely that's casting. I'm like, casting is when you throw your elbow, or even worse, you throw your elbow forward. So releasing in my world is letting the club release back and down. My body turns, my body pivot puts pressure on the ball. That's the lag. Well, as you see me swing, I'm letting that come out and release early enough that the speed is at the bottom. Your, your person, they went like this, they went over the top, and it would release itself way after impact. It wouldn't release itself early enough to create speed at the bottom. You're right, and when they'd release it early like that, I noticed it pulled you forward, throwing you off balance. That's going to lead to inconsistency. We developed a device that leads to a consistent motion that you can feel, because everything you've discussed is actually a feeling that people, poorer golfers don't know, but Ernie Els knows. And, it, and it's interesting, I was going over some notes that are more than 30 years old from my mentor, Mr. Lanning, who taught me as a kid. He always wrote R and T. 
rhythm and tempo, rhythm yeah. and tempo, rhythm and tempo. That's what he had on his little yellow sheets that he would hand me my notes when I would go home. This is helping the person who will take the time to get one of these and practice with it. They're going to find their natural rhythm and tempo and learn to release the club at the right time, not early or late, so that they get most efficient with their golf swing. That's great information, Stan. I appreciate that, that viewpoint and that, that the whole concept of describing what a person goes through when it's a positive swing or when it's, a, it's one that feels awkward. All right. I hope this helps you viewers at home, and I'm excited to know that you score lower because you practice correctly. <laughs>